Hello friends and welcome back after this long, long time after we've done the Indie Impressions episode on Dear Esther. It is finally time to let's play the rest of this thing. And it's a uh, glorious return to form because I have not done a solo let's play in a very long time. So I'm glad to be able to share this one with you. I know you guys have been interested in it and I feel bad putting it off so long. But you know, I was working on the website and everything and... You know, I wanted to wait until things stabled out, stabilized out a little bit. You know, I made sure we got indie impressions done every day, but the extracurriculars had to take a little bit of a backseat. Hopefully, you understand. Uh, but we should have a real good time. Um, I had a couple of options with how to approach this one. I could have either, you know, done it the way I did McPixel, which is to take the indie impressions episode as like the jumping-off point and make that episode one, and then do two, three, whatever beyond that, but I think it makes more sense since this game is somewhat randomly generated uh, to actually just play this straight over again. I mean, obviously I'm not going to have the same stuff to say about it twice, so we'll uh, we'll take a shot at it and see how it goes. Uh, I'm going to go through the beginning a little bit quicker since obviously you can watch that, you know, as I uh, played it the first time. Uh, should be cool. Been looking forward to playing this for way too long, so uh, that will be it. So let me, uh, I'll pick us up after we get through the quick dialogue uh, when we get to the lighthouse. Dear Esther, I sometimes feel as if I've given birth to this island. Somewhere between the longitude and latitude, a split opened up, and it beached remotely here. No matter how hard I correlate, it remains a singularity, an alpha point in my life that refuses all hypothesis. I return each time leaving fresh markers that I hope, in the full glare of my hopelessness, will have blossomed into fresh insight in the interim. So you'll have to pardon the uh, occasional cuts that I make in fraps just because sometimes the, for some reason the frame rate just sort of takes a hit uh, after loading. I'm not really sure what that's about. And you know I should show you, just because I found this by accident, if you, uh... Is there anything in the boat over here? No, it doesn't look like it. Uh, if you actually head out into the water... Whoa. Stuff happens. It's pretty crazy, actually. Come back. Well, not that crazy, but, you know, it's something. I didn't think I'd even be able to walk beyond this, because you can actually just go out quite a ways into the ocean before you actually drown. And, uh... Oh. It's actually... I thought it was way further than that last time. Oh, well. That doesn't exactly matter. So here we are. We're playing Dear Esther. It's been way, way too long since I got to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with you guys, and we weren't under the pressure to do anything in particular other than just hang out and comment on the things we see. For example, this dilapidated rowboat here. Uh, we see this. I don't know. It doesn't have much relevance, unfortunately. Um, so I am going to sort of poke around again, uh, just to take a look to see what's changed, if anything. Uh, I did watch the old episode just to get a refresher course. What does this book say? Food and goods. What else does it say? Can't quite read it. I got some different. Pretty sure there's different stuff on the desk this time because I think there was a red book. May have been that red book. In fact, was over here. Uh, and there was that sheet music right on the floor there. So that's the same. And I don't honestly remember what was on this table. I didn't really look at this one that closely. I can't quite even tell what language that is. Looks interesting though, whatever. Whatever it may be. So secretly hoping for a little Cyrillic so I could demonstrate to you guys that I can read some easy to moderate Cyrillic. That would be uh, Russian for you guys, mostly. Alright, so this place seems mostly the same. Maybe they moved one or two things around. Probably not worth dwelling on. I don't even know if I need to go in here. This is just a bunch of paint cans. No big deal. So let's take the low road this time. I remember last time I went up on that cliff. Get a better look at the ocean. Seems like a good call. 
Especially since I think we end up down here regardless. So I think the unique thing about this game that gets so often glossed over is the fact that it's a... It's a linear narrative, but it's made up of a bunch of little tidbits, like, in an experimental way. Like, you can see different parts of the story, and from what I've heard, it doesn't actually give you a distinct resolution. It's all up to you and how you interpret it. So if you were to take, like, 50 little bits of a story and put them in a hat, and pull out 10 each time, you're going to get a very different story. And I'm not sure if those numbers have anything to do with the reality of what Dear Esther is, is actually doing, but I believe the concept is roughly similar. So I'm very interested to know how that works, and I really like the fact that you can actually do this multiple times and come up with a slightly different conclusion. And I'm still awestruck by the beauty of this landscape. And just the, the color palette of it is just so stunning. I mean, it's just this muted... Um, I almost see, like, the when colors of chrome. Mother told me a hush fell over the delivery room. A great red birthmark covered the left side of your face. No one knew what to say, so you cried to fill the vacuum. I always admired you for that, that you cried to fill whatever vacuum you found. I began to manufacture vacuums just to enable you to deploy your talent. The birthmark faded by the time you were six, and had gone completely by the time we met, but your fascination with the empty and its cure remained. Such interesting little bits and pieces, they're so uh, eloquently spoken. What is this? Yeah, see, I'm taking a totally different path right now. This is not the way I went the other time. Is it like alchemy or something? I have no clue what that's supposed to be, honestly. So I'm gonna try and break this up into something between like 15-20 minute chunks, thereabouts, so um... Hopefully I'll be able to stick to schedule on that, I may just have to eat my words, we'll see. I'll be quiet again. as featureless as this ocean, as shallow and unoccupied as this bay listless wreck without identification. My rocks are these bones, and a careful fence to keep the precipice at bay. Shot through me caves. My forehead a mount. This aerial will transmit into me so. All overexposed, the nervous system, where Donnelly's boots and yours and mine still trample. I will carry a torch for you. I will leave it at the foot of my headstone. You will need it for the tunnels that carry me under. That is a car door, and that is, I believe, the better part of an axle with two... Wow, okay, so something very bad happened with this car here. Um, there's more markings on the rock, which I can't quite tell. It's like a north marker up there. It's something I can't read what that is. Certainly compelling, whatever it is. Um, I can tell, too, that the, the tone that this takes, it's going to come to some sort of really tear-jerking conclusion. And that's what you guys want, isn't it? You want me to cry at the end. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Whatever happens, I'll be legit about it. I'm not going to, you know, act. Uh, but I will be running the risk of the, you know, as I always do with these videos, I'm going to be doing double duty trying to pay attention to what I'm saying and at the same time what's going on around me and trying to put together the bigger picture. And it's always easier to do that when you can really just immerse yourself and let yourself kind of go. And when you're trying to do narrative uh, or, you know, commentary, it, it's a little harder to just let go completely because you do need to be channeling some sort of a frame of reference for everything that you're doing. You're, you're sort of running through, well, stream of consciousness in my case, because that's sort of how I do my narrative. I know a lot of people don't. I know a lot of people prefer to, you know, write down a couple of notes or what have you. I don't do that stuff. I just speak from the heart. Whatever I see is going on, whatever's running through my mind. Keep it simple. I think it's much more interesting that way. You know, I never want to be 
that really just boring, um, like predictable type of commentator or narrator. I'm not sure which I fall into. Maybe a little of both. Should probably look up the definition of the two. <laughs> I would say commentators probably fall more under like uh, the speaking actions. The point of this landscape. I'll be quiet again. It almost appears so well placed as to be artificial. I find myself easily slipping into the delusional state of ascribing purpose, deliberate motive to everything here. Was this island formed during the moment of impact, when we were torn loose from our moorings and the seat belts cut motorway lanes into our chests and shoulders? Did it first break surface then? Yeah, what I was saying, the uh, I think commentators probably are more about describing. When someone had oh, died man. or was dying, Just let me talk, man. Was so ill, they gave up what little hope they could sacrifice. They cut parallel lines into the cliff, exposing the white chalk beneath. You could see them from the mainland or the fishing boat, and notice and aid or impose a cordon of protection, and wait a generation until whatever pestilence stalked the cliff path died along with its hosts. My lines are just for this, to keep any would-be rescuers at bay. The infection is not simply of the flesh. Alright, well, I think you get what I was trying to say. Uh, I was going to just make the reference. It seems more like, you know, describing a basketball game. You're more of a commentator, and if you're describing a bigger picture, it seems like you're more of a narrator. Um, I quote but I'm sure there's a direct meaning. A motley lot with little to recommend them. I have now spent three days in their company. That is, I fear, enough for any man not born amongst them. Despite their tedious inclination to quote scripture, they seem to me the most godforsaken of all the inhabitants of the Outer Isles. Indeed, in this case, the very gravity of that term, forsaken by God, seems to find its very apex. It appears to me that Donnelly, too, found those who wander this shoreline to be adrift from any chance of redemption. Did he include himself in that, I wonder? Hmm. Seems like the narrative's moving along at a much more brisk pace this time. Maybe it's just because I'm walking faster. Um, I remember there was, I thought, larger breaks between those text boxes, and I'm trying to actually pay attention to them this time. Dear Esther, okay. <laughs> I met Paul. I made my own little pilgrimage. My Damascus, a small semi-detached on the outskirts of Wolverhampton. We drank coffee in his kitchen and tried to connect to one another. Although he knew I hadn't come in search of an apology, reason, or retribution, he still spiraled in panic, thrown high and lucid by his own dented bonnet. Responsibility had made him old. Like us, he'd already passed beyond any conceivable boundary of life. I threw and, my arms wow, wide. I was tempted to talk over him, but you know, this rough home. I'll be consistent. I transferred my belongings from the Bothy on the Mount and tried to live here instead. It was cold at night, and the sea lapped at the entrance at high tide. To climb the peak, I must first venture even deeper into the veins of the island where the signals are blocked altogether. Only then will I understand them, when I stand on the summit and they flow into me, uncorrupted. Um, if it gets to the point where all of my commentary is completely blocked by that, I may just keep talking. Um, could be a little awkward, because I don't want the talking to be a little confusing with me talking over it and, you know, both vice versa, but you can at least read uh, what's going on. Which I am thankful for. Subtitles are very good. Especially with foreign movies. I really like the light quality as it changes from this cave to going back outside. Everything has this like, like rose-tinted, sort of ashy look to it. Uh, which is just very glowing and vibrant. And then when you come in here, the level to which these walls are glowing is quite amazing as well. Pretty sure I said similar thing last time I walked through here. So far I'm not getting a ton from the story. I mean, there's there's clearly something going on, uh, but we're speaking in a lot of very metaphorical, grand terms. Uh, we need something a little bit more concrete to nail down with a character, perhaps. I want to go over there, but I'm pretty sure I can't. Oh wells. 
Uh, so we've gotten to the point where we should probably wrap up the first episode just because uh, I am trying to be aware of the file size of these and I want to keep these coming on a fairly quick uh, clip. So I'm going to cut us at this point and we will pick up here. Um, I know this is probably a little frustrating considering you waited all this time and then I don't even make any new progress, but we will make progress in the next episode, I promise. And we will uh, probably blaze through the series pretty quickly. I don't imagine I'm going to linger too far on it. I'm trying to possibly do the whole thing in one night. We'll see how it goes. It's a little late as it is, but um, I'm probably going to get pulled into this pretty soon. We will see. So uh, thank you very much for stopping by for the first episode, and I do hope that you come back for the second one. And we will see what sort of emotional revelations and beautiful landscapes we can uncover as we proceed. So there's the lighthouse. We walked from there to here. Oh boy. Look at the pretty sky. Alright, see you guys next time. Later.